What's up, YouTube? You know, I did a video a couple weeks ago about the M1 Mac and Illustrator. Specifically, I'm using this MacBook Air that we got from my wife. And if you remember in that video, I said, I don't recommend that people run out and buy one of these M1 Macs if they rely on the Adobe workflow. Because the Adobe apps have just not been optimized for Apple Silicon yet. We don't know when they will be optimized. We know that the basic version of Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, but the basic version is coming first, and then Photoshop next. I haven't heard anything about other apps being optimized, but that's kind of what we know so far. And I was taking a look at Illustrator, seeing how it runs through Rosetta. And I'm not replacing my main machine right now. This is my wife's MacBook Air. So it's running M1, it's the base model, seven core with just eight gigabytes of RAM. And um, Illustrator ran pretty well for me. But since that happened, we've seen a lot of people reporting in the comments of that video that Illustrator crashes for them and it crashes varying times. For some people, it's crashing as soon as they open it and try to draw anything. For some people, they're getting 20, 30 minutes into a project and then it's crashing. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of consistency there. But a lot of people have been asking to see InDesign running on the M1 Mac because it doesn't look like InDesign's been shown by very many people either. So today I've downloaded InDesign, we're looking at it here, and we're just going to take a look and see if it runs. I'm not going to do a ton of different tests, we're just seeing if it runs for me, just like Illustrator did, or if we're seeing crashes. Again, this won't tell you if it's going to run on yours, because there just doesn't seem to be consistency across the board on whether or not these things are running evenly. We're just going to take a look at it, make a document, put some text into it, um, get an image, put it, an image into it, see how it's handling those things, unless it just crashes right off the bat. So I've got it downloaded here on the Mac and we're going to go ahead and take a look. I'm going to create a new document and we'll just go with letter, just the standard thing. I'm going to switch this to inches and then we'll click create. We'll see, we had no trouble creating it. When we did the Illustrator one, we had a little bit of trouble creating the artboard. We had no trouble creating this document. So there's just one page in here right now and not too much going on. So let's add a text box. I'm still getting used to the way this force trackpad works because I haven't had a force trackpad before. So I'm still getting used to how that works. Let's go ahead and we'll just go and we'll fill this with some placeholder text. Okay, no trouble there. This is again, just one page. Some InDesign documents get huge, but we're just testing things out. Okay, so that seems to be fine. Let's go ahead and we'll just go grab an image. Okay, so let's go ahead and place, make sure I'm not selected on the actual text box, Command D, let's place it. Okay, there is our tree, so. Not too much trouble placing the tree. Zoom in, see if zooming causes any issues. Zoom out. It's not buttery smooth there, but it's not bad either. So let's go ahead and we'll try a text wrap on this. So we're just going to go to the properties panel and we're going to choose text wrap. And it's going to select that. Okay, we don't. Need to learn more right now. So we've got our text wrap and looks like it's text wrapping around it fine. Let's give it a little bit of space there. And let's see what happens as we move it. Let's see if we can, oops. Looks like it's handling the reflow without a problem. All right, let's go make a couple more pages. Doesn't seem to have a problem adding pages. Of course, InDesign documents can get larger and larger the more things that you add to them and that can slow down your machine normally. So we would expect that if we had a really large document, which I don't have any on this computer, but if we had a really large document that it would slow down. An optimized version for M1 would probably run super well and we wouldn't see a ton of trouble with it handling really large documents the way we might on one of the old Intel Macs. But this version is not optimized and so it could crash when you try and do a large document. Okay, let's pop back up here. We can try 
making some text boxes. Just fill them all with placeholder text since we don't have anything here and then we'll just copy in between the spreads so that we can just see if we get a lot of text here will it have any kind of a problem doesn't seem to be having any kind of problem Let's go ahead and come down here and we'll just try a couple of shape things. So let's try drawing a rectangle. Give it a fill. And a stroke. Just testing it out, just seeing if it works. Let's go ahead and grab an ellipse. Select those two together and try a Pathfinder merge on them. Refill it again. Okay, so no trouble seems to be having with shapes. Try the pen tool here. Try filling it with a gradient, to see if that causes any trouble. sizing okay no issues with shapes text okay let's try and add in title Change the color, change the stroke. Advanced stroke, and then we'll set it to be on the, oh, it's already aligned to the outside, perfect. Okay, all these basic functions appear to be working fine. Doesn't seem to be an issue. I think we'll try placing a couple more images just to see that does anything. Okay, no hangups for me. Seems to be running fine. But Illustrator seems to be running fine too. And for a lot of people, what I'm hearing is that it's not running fine for them. And so I don't know, it could be that you come in here and you try and use InDesign and you make a 300 page book and it just crashes. Now that could happen on an Intel Mac. So that's not necessarily to say that nothing will work on here. It certainly seems to be working for me as far as trying to perform the basic functions. So I don't know, maybe if I stayed on here for an hour or two, maybe it would crash, but I don't seem to be having any trouble with this one. But again, this is a MacBook Air with an M1 chip. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM. It doesn't seem to be having any problem with this. One last thing I think we'll try is we'll try switching to overprint preview. We'll just see if that does anything. These are not huge images. Large images might cause more of a problem rendering an overprint preview. Certainly the scrolling is a little bit choppy, but it was choppy before. I don't know if that's more choppy because of overprint preview. It does look a little bit smoother without it on. So that's about what we've got right now. It seems to be working. Seems like you could do something in it, but again, I would not recommend buying one of these as your only option for working in the Creative Cloud if your livelihood depends on the Creative Cloud because there will be problems. There's always problems when new things get released. That's normal, 
but this is especially going to be problematic because they're running on a completely different architecture than they've ever run on before. Adobe hasn't done anything to make them run on there. Only Apple has made the translation layer Rosetta to try and make these Intel apps run. And some of them are running well, some of them are running well for some people, some of them are crashing for some people, some of them aren't running at all, depending on what apps you're using. All of the Adobe ones that I've seen tested and that I've tested myself seem to run sometimes on some Macs in some circumstances, which is not very reassuring. So again, I think it's a good time to just sit back. If you wanna try it out, if you have the money, if you need another laptop in addition to your main work machine or something, you could try it out. But I think now is the time for creatives to sit back and say, wow, these machines seem really powerful. They look really good, but I'm gonna wait until Adobe's updated, until the next version, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the iMac. Sit back, wait for those to come. Maybe Adobe will be updated by that time. And those are the machines that you really are probably looking for. Now, of course, the other option that I talked about in the video several weeks back is switching away from Adobe to other creative programs, which you can do. You can get Affinity that's optimized. You can get DaVinci that's optimized. And you could start to do creative work using those applications. And they're ready for M1 Mac. So if you really wanted to be able to do it, that would be something to look into. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if you've tried running InDesign on an M1 Mac, go ahead and let me know if it's working for you, if it's not working for you, what you're seeing on your end. And let me know if there's other videos that you'd like to see from me. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.